Jones here wanted to talk to you today about a common po uh, problem for a lot of parents, and that's dealing with picky eating. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm a pediatrician here, and this is one of the most common frustrations that I see uh, with parents. It starts out, of course, babies born with eating one thing. They're eating either breast milk or formula. And then we start solids. Usually that's typically between five and seven months, and it's usually when they're able to sit up in a high chair. Now, most of the time, by seven months, they're able to eat. And often as early as eight, nine months, some kids are going to want to already start picking food on their own off that's partially, you know, easy to eat, uh, you know, mashed potatoes and mushed up table food, and start to feed themselves. Usually by year, usually not soon after year, they're wanting to uh, self-feed. But during that time, they will pretty much eat just about anything you give them as far as types of food, with the exception of, of course, with uh, potential for choking hazards and, and those kind of things. But what happens is in that second year of life, they start to get more selective. They don't want to eat food or eat things that are not necessarily uh, edible. You know, they're not going to eat um, metal and paper clips and those kind of things. They may still put them in their mouth, but they'll start to get say, hey, this is not... Um, something I should be eating. But around the same time, they're also being selective about what foods they're going to put in their mouth and what foods they're going to eat. During the same time period, kids start to lose body fat, also known as start to become thinner. And they're being more selective, they're getting thinner. And on top of that, the amount of food they eat starts to go down. It's not uncommon for a three or four year old to eat actually less food than a one year old is eating. So they're eating less, they're getting thinner, thinner, and they're becoming more selective, also known as picky. So what that's the background. That is what is normal. And if you don't do anything or you don't know about that, you may help um, lead to your child becoming picky. So what can you do about it? Well, first is if you are a picky eater yourself as a parent, the likelihood that your child will be picky is high. And if both you and your significant other, your husband or wife, or, are picky, your um, child is highly likely going to be picky as well. You can only be a hypocrite so long, so to speak, and eat, pretend to like the foods, and then go off and eat something that's not healthy and have pizza or something else. So here's something that you can do. One, expect the kids can eat healthy foods, and you can eat healthy foods. Number two is when you're, you want to offer what we call number, what I call number one, number two, and number three foods. Number one foods are foods that they always eat. Number two foods are, yeah, sometimes they eat it, sometimes they don't. Number three foods are, you know what, sometimes you put it on their plate and they throw it at you. They never eat it. What your hope is when they're eating, they know they have at least something they can eat. So you're offering the foods. You did, uh, That's what your choice. Hope is that eventually they can eat um, the number two foods more often. Number three foods, they're at least, maybe they'll put it in their mouth. Maybe put it in their mouth ten times, and then they'll spit it out. But over time, on their own accord, without any pressure, you can't say, well, please do a no thank you bite, or can you just have one, because that puts on some pressure um, to do something that, how come I don't get that with those number one foods, foods that they like more? You're also deciding, um, so what to eat is your responsibility as a parent. You're also deciding when to eat. When a one-year-old may be eating six times a day, six different meals, you, and you want to have um, that relatively uh, consistent times. Um, the next thing you want to decide where you're going to eat. It. If you want your kid and your family to walk around the house eating all the time, that's fine. But most parents don't want that. It's a big mess. And you want to be able to eat at a table or a countertop and be sitting and eating. So you're deciding what, you're deciding when, and you where. Their responsibility is to decide how much they're going to eat. One time they may eat a whole pancake. The next day they may eat only half a pancake. One day they may eat half an orange or strawberries. The next day they may not eat any. Just relax. They're deciding what and how much they're going to eat. And they're going to uh, decide how they're going to eat it. If they want to use their hands, let them use their hands, especially when they're young toddlers. If they want to use a fork, they can. But let them decide how they're going to eat. And they're going to get a mess, and they're going to be get it all over their face. Relax about it. That's okay. Um, and they're going to, so you, what, when, where, how, 
those are things both what responsibilities are for you and for your child. And then if you offer that, and you offer opportunity to eat, they're over time going to enjoy more foods and um, make your uh, take the pressure off you. And hopefully by the time they get in the kindergarten, they can eat most foods and politely say no to foods that they do not uh, want to eat. Because you don't always feel like eating a salad every day, and you don't always feel like eating oranges every day. Some days you do, some days you don't. In the same way, give that a flexibility to the kids. This is a brief summary. Uh, hopefully this has helped you. If you like some more in-depth information about this, Ellen Satter is a dietitian out of Madison, Wisconsin, has written a number of books. Um, so if you're interested, you can uh, uh, read some of those good uh, books as well to get some more in-detail information. Again, Dr. Michael Lenz, thank you.